Howdy, everyone. My name is Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. We're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On each episode, a few of us folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 show submissions. Why? Well, in order to find what we call Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. They'll then need to pick out the correct podcast title from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get the show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today. Starting with Pratik. Hey, everyone. Next up, we've got Oliver. Hey, Nicholas. Happy to be here today. How are you? I'm great, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're happy to be here we're all just one big happy family next up we've got max i'm here and i'm ready for my apology from last week (laughs) oh my god padukin padukin scandal max i just said we were all happy to be here don't ruin this for me we all saw what happened and for the to add to the public record just so happened there was coincidentally a glitch on zoom while Nicholas was announcing the titles, completely obscuring what was an obvious clue and thus handicapping me irreparably. And I think we all know I would have got the right answer Sure, had this coincidentally not happened. So obvious sabotage. And I just want to bring this element of, you know, this controversy into the light to get it dealt with. This is what I get for like pinging you to apologize and give you the win yesterday. Clearly (laughs) public needs to know. Yeah. The public has a right to know it was Padukin and Max would have gotten it right. Maybe maybe jump (laughs) jumping on forward. I won't yield more than that. It's still a maybe (laughs) Um, jumping on to our next contestant. We've got Jesse. Howdy. And Christy. Let's go. And of course, we have our producer, Alyssa, with our ad read of the day. I was trying to come up with a more colorful word for it. Nope, it's just an ad read. Say <laughs> say what it is, you know? No, yeah. no need to get creative here. Anyways, okay. Looking to take your podcast to the next level? With Headliner's podcast promo, growing your audience has never been easier or man- more transparent. As a programmatic ad tool, the podcast promo gets your pod in front of the right audience at a time and place they are most receptive to new ideas and messages. Just provide your podcast's RSS feed some targeting parameters and let us do the rest. All right. Cool. Thank you for that. So without further ado, let's just dive right into things. Max, it sounds like you had a lot on your mind. So let's just start with you this week, man. Let's just see how that goes. Let's just hope no coincidental glitches happen on this Zoom call. So I'm going to I'm going to be completely real with you. I think that this first choice is actually something I had sent to you like five months ago when we were working on something. So <laughs> if you get this one wrong, that is entirely on you and I will <laughs> rub it in. <laughs> I rarely remember what I had for lunch yesterday. So fantastic. Gonna not remember that either. But let's give it a try. <laughs> It's a big examination of like, like masculine energy and and in, in all its food. forms and yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. Fred Ward, yeah, Fred Ward. It's so a great, have you ever talked about Remo Williams, Williams The Adventure Begins, and how much I love that movie? Have we talked about, about problematic politics in yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent, hundred percent. Um, even a whole great performance from Joel yeah. Gray, but woo, that's a, ooh, that's not yeah, that is that's not true. appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, the action in this movie, though, just staying to this point, because there isn't specific sequences I could necessarily extract and say, oh, what do you think of this sequence? It's almost like the whole film is, uh, certainly the whole second half is like that. And the final point I was just going to make about how wonderful the action is in this film, because it's we've used this word a few times, and to me this is where an action movie really works, is when it feels experiential. Because yes. my abiding memory of seeing this film with my parents at the cinema on the big screen was you felt like you were going to get splashed by the water yes. literally yes. it was such an am- okay there was your clip and here are your options max no pressure which of course naturally means full pressure number one die hard on a blank number two 
Mike's camera action with Willis. And three, welcome to the party pod. Did you send this to me? In the I best? did. I did. Really? Yeah, wow. I remember because I was like, this is such a me podcast. And you sent it to me to tell me I how. Much no, I sent it to you because we were doing something. research into something and I used it as a sample. Ah. Yeah. Oof. Okay. I do not remember the name of this one. Okay. Can you read them again? Yeah, sure. Number one is Die Hard on a Blank. Number two, Mike's Camera Action with Willis. And number three, Welcome to the Party Pod. Uh, like all these titles in their own way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the first one just because mm. I like it. But okay. I really have no idea. Well, it sounds like you did because you did get it right. It is Die Hard on a Blank. Yes. And it is a like vaguely Die Hard themed podcast. Hence the title. When they, they change it. Every episode name is is <laughs> what the thing is that they're going to die hard on. Oh, maybe. Maybe they do that. Like today we're talking about, for example, this episode is about the River Wild. So it's die hard on the River Wild, maybe. For That's all awesome. This That's so cool. Hard on the <laughs> That's a great title. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. So, yes, like I just said, this is about this episode is titled The River Wild with Blake Howard. And here's our show description. Welcome to the party, pals. This is Die Hard on a Blank, a podcast where hosts Philip Gawthorne and Liam Billingham explore the influence of Die Hard on action cinema, one action movie at a time. In each episode of Die Hard on a Blank, Philip and co-host Liam Billingham discuss one major mainstream action movie that was released after Die Hard. Phil and Liam break down the story, heroes, villains, action, humor, and the diehard DNA that's infused in each film, including common cast and crew members. They rate each film and hand out diehard-themed awards. For casual fans and action movie diehards, Die Hard on a Blank is a fun movie discussion podcast that treats the action genre with real respect and love. Die Hard on a Blank is created, written, and hosted by Philip Gawthorne. Liam Billingham produces and co-hosts the show. Mike Mayer and Michael Sugar are the executive producers. Olivia, I don't know how to say your last name, so I'm going to apologize in advance. Olivia Eilmer is our marketing pro. Tyson Hubley makes our artwork and videos. Special thanks to the Suki Chu. Special thanks to Suki Chu and everyone at Sugar Twenty Three. So there you have it. Pretty cool idea for a podcast. And again, I remembered it because this sounds like something I would listen to. Um. Yeah. Very you. It's like yeah. Type of podcast. I mean, I was literally just spouting trivia about Italian knockoff movies like before we hit record. So let's just jump on over to our next contestant, shall we? Let's go with Jesse. Let's get it. Close it. Pick one. <laughs> also, this references their sores, which tells us that these bowls of judgment seem to be an accumulation of plagues rather than just a succession of plagues, which Laura alluded to a moment ago. But circling back to that hell on earth theory, I found an interesting reference that the darkness and this fifth bowl is described by Jesus as the outer darkness in Matthew 25, verse 30 in the King James Version. When I looked at this verse in the NIV version, there does seem to be quite a bit of correlation. It reads, and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This reference comes from the parable of the bags of gold where the master went on a journey and entrusted his servants with his wealth. This third servant was only given a bag with one gold in it, and he did nothing with it. He didn't think, he didn't work, he didn't even try at all, and then he made excuses. This servant was judged harshly for squandering his wealth and being lazy. Okay, there's our clip, and here are your options for today. Number one, retelling the Bible. Number two, revelations retold. And number three, my ministry mission. Ooh, I like that last one. Mm. You no, know, you it know nice how one. I am with some alliteration, and I used yeah. it correctly this time. <laughs> so, I retelling the Bible, Revelations retold. Is mm -hmm. that is that what you said? I like that one too. But there's just three M's, and I, I gotta go with number three. I gotta stick to stick to my gut here. Right, because it's not you're not a fan of M and M's. You're a fan of M and M and M's. M and M and M's. I was so I was in a, a music fraternity in college called Phi Mu Alpha, which was and they made uh, some like weird science experiment triple M and M. 
Well, no, we had our, our philanthropy was the Mills Music oh. Mission, and so it's uh, okay. It's uh, Triple M there too, and so I'm just gonna I'm gonna I feel like it's a sign. Let's go for it. Okay, that, I respect that. That's a good reason, as opposed to like some Frankenstein M and M. The correct answer was my ministry mission. Woo! So yeah, good on you. And this was from the episode Unveiling Revelation: The Seven Bowls, Part Two, Episode Fifty Six. So. Good artwork for this one. Just very clean, very, very literal artwork. You see like what looks like a Bible over there and then a microphone next to it. And here's a bit about this show. My ministry mission is about this man's journey from non-believer to disciple of Christ. I look for topics that have been a challenge to me to understand as a Christian new in his faith. I invite you to join me as I try to tackle some of these questions, and whether you're newly saved or have been a Christ follower all your life, my hope is for this podcast to inspire, challenge, and educate, and hopefully bring some clarity to those difficult topics. God has placed a calling in my heart, and I want to answer that call. My name is Jason, and this is my mission. So, interesting. It's it's a very personal-led podcast by the sound of things, which is interesting because I feel like a lot of podcasts are like experts in topics and stuff. So it's cool for someone to just do something and talk about their perspective on it as they're doing it. I don't know. I think that's kind of refreshing. Anyway, let's jump over to our next contestant. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Oliver. Let's go with you next. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> It's not just pushing the button to be a good photographer, as anybody can tell you. And it's the same with the AI. It's just not a matter of clicking on something. You've got to have a long dialogue. You've got to conjole. You you can have magic incantations. You have to whisper to the AI to get it to do what it is that you want. And some people are AI whispers. They're really, really good. I, I follow a couple of people who get a very consistent look and can make things continuous and it's thousands of hours of working with these AIs to be able to do that. So uh, hats off to them, but that's what it's going to take. Truly. Yeah, it, it is. I agree with you. And, and I'm finding it, it's all about the old uh, computer programming coding axiom from back when I was a kid, you know, G I G O garbage in garbage out. Okay. So there were your options. Uh, or, well, there was your clip, and here are your options. N number one, Rogue Retirement Lounge with Matt Franklin, entrepreneur. No, no. next. No, next. Just mm -mm. jumping on over. Okay. <laughs> Number two, putting hey, the fun hey. in. Wrong, wrong, wrong set, wrong set. Wrong set, really? Wrong set, yeah. Highlight it for me, please. Tense. Because that was the next one on the list. Oh, okay. He, well, Oliver knew. He knew Oliver right just knew. He, yeah, he yeah. was on top of this. Okay. To be fair, I didn't mean what Alyssa just said, but I did. No, no, I figured. Take as the much. win, Oliver. Take the win. I can't. <laughs> Culturally speaking, it's not allowed where I'm from. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> anyway, here are the real options. Number one, art is life, and life is art with Dee Dee. Maybe. Number two, Life Lessons with Duncan D. And number three, The Art of Being oh, Dar that. with Dar Dixon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Duncan <laughs> D. What a great Massachusetts reference right there. I love that. <laughs> Throw it out. Sorry, I missed the third one. Yeah, that's fine. The Art of Being Dar with Dar Dixon. Art of Being Dar. Well, since they were talking about AI whispering... Mm -hmm. Shout out to Max, as he is our resident whisperer. <laughs> I I would like, Nicholas, um, could we get uh, option one and three again? Yeah, sure. Number one is Art is Life and the Life is Art with DD. Number three is The Art of Being Dar with Dar Dixon. So I want to pick number three, but then I feel like... Mm. It's going to be like, Dar Dixon is a TikToker from Sri Lanka. I, <laughs> you know that? Or like, Dar Dixon was an Italian filmmaker who did a, a remake of Jaws, but instead of a shark, it was uh, Groundhogs. Like, it was actually Felipe oh, yeah. Dar, that. Oliver, but that's fine. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go number three. I don't know who Dar Dixon is, but I, I'm about to find out whether okay. it's or something else locked and loaded. Well, you are correct, sir. It is <laughs> the one with Dar Dixon. And this was from the episode The Kevin Kelly Experience, version 2.0, which means there was a balance patch at some point between 1.0 and now. Uh, um, they didn't nerf Dar. They nerfed Dar. He was too good. They balance checked him. So, yes, the description for this show is the quick and succinct art is life and life is art. So there you have it. Um, interesting stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for life being art and art being life. And I'm really curious about how they patched our friend Kevin Kelly. Who knows? At any rate, you guys are all on the money today so far. How about that? Last week, you, you guys got really close and then you didn't. Now you're you're on track. So let's see if you can keep this momentum up. I've been studying. Coming up, you've been studying. You've been studying picking from random options, I see. Interesting. <laughs> Coming up next, we have Pratik. Let's do it. Eyes are closed. Okie doke. Thank you for announcing that, by the way. I appreciate that. But then the wage inflation drives further price increases, and you have a doom loop of rising prices. Anyway, um, I digress. So we've established one, plan to hold your Bitcoin for four years, or better yet, five or even longer. And number two, the value of the dollar is constantly declining, not because we don't tax the rich enough, not because Putin, but because of the increasing money supply. So why is it so important to establish that the value of your dollars are declining. The reason that I'm including that fact is that people knock Bitcoin because of its volatility, because it goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. And while that is a frightening thing to live through, we just lived through a, a pretty frightening bear market. The fact is, is that your dollars, your wealth, your net worth in dollar denominated terms is constantly being eaten away by inflation. Okay, here are your options. Number one, the art of being Dar with Dar Dixon. No, I'm kidding. No, um, no. The real first one is... <laughs> I couldn't even sell it. Okay. No, the real first option is Rogue Retirement Lounge with Matt Franklin, entrepreneur, investor, Bitcoin enthusiast. Number two, putting the fun in retirement fungibles with Maddie F., Number three, making money moves, Bitcoin edition with M. Frank. What was the first one again? Rogue Retirement Lounge with Matt Franklin, entrepreneur, investor, Bitcoin enthusiast. Got it. So definitely talking about Bitcoin. So I don't think it's the second one. And this was the one that Oliver said it's not. I think the first one, Oliver is like this. I, I, I'm going to go for it. The first one is what I'm going to go for that Oliver said it's. <laughs> But it's not. No reasoning <laughs> besides what I just said. Okay. Well, Savage that, move. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked. So nice. good on you. You guys are getting yeah, us really say, close to a perfect game. Right. What? I was going to be surprised if you didn't get that right. Alyssa's used the making money moves before. Oh, okay. I did not remember that. I thought about that. And then I was like, well, what are the odds that, that anyone remembers? So apparently very high. So good there, job, Max. There you go. I don't know what this, I forgot the second one though, but I remember it also being like, no way. I'm a little offended that Max could remember making money moves, but not the podcast I sent him, but that's fine. We'll deal with that in counseling later, Max. It's so a yes. Very different level of space in my head. <laughs> I remember Cardi B song. I think Fred does that song. Okay, there you go. I can't remember. Oh, anything. yeah, fair enough. No, it is a Cardi B song. You're right. Okay, there you go. So I can remember yeah. Cardi B songs, but anything above that length, Space, mental space, it's gone. Noted. So this was from the episode Bitcoin 101, how to buy your first Bitcoin. And our show description is, if you're self-employed and you want to learn about retirement planning and investing, this podcast is for you. And this one's under two asterisks, so I want to emphasize it for you. This is not your average, boring retirement podcast. And asterisks. The Rogue Retirement Lounge covers investing basics, real estate, self-directed IRAs, retiring abroad, and much more. 
We talk about how to find cash flowing assets that can beat stock market returns with less risk. We also cover tax reduction strategies, asset protection, macroeconomics, and other financial goodness, along with other info you need to know as you approach retirement, including Social Security, Medicare, travel, health, longevity, and more. That's so fun. I love how you just said financial goodness at the end there. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting stuff. Good artwork. Just really clean to the point. Tells you exactly what it is. So, neat. Jumping on over. <laughs> As Alyssa uh, pings me something. Jumping on over <laughs> to our next contestant. We're just blown right past that. We have Christy. Let's go! Love it. And we presented him a jersey, and he ran out on the field himself. And uh, see the expression on his face. It was did, worth, did he do a hundred? Did he do a hundred yard dash? Well, he didn't do the hundred yard <laughs> dash, but the expression made the struggle and the fight to get that to get that done worth uh, worth it. Well, as a Ramona graduate, I'm, I'm appreciative appreciative of that as well. So, what other accomplishments or projects are you proud of during your tenure as council member? Well, we obviously talked a little bit about the Arlington Heights Sports Park, but uh, we've also had, a, I think, an opportunity to revitalize Arlington Village. We have five historic mur murals in the city. We have a wildly successful chili cook-off every Memorial Day weekend. But really, we've just scratched the surface. We've got some exciting projects coming to Arlington that's going to continue to revitalize uh, the Arlington community. Every time I enjoy a soft serve ice cream cone at, at Dairy Queen at California Square, it, it, that again was worth the fight to keep the Dairy Queen in California Square. And also the Citrus Park. Uh, Mar okay. Okay. There you have it. And here are your three options. And I promise, by the way, I want to put this out there for the record so that I don't sound like I'm always picking on you, Christy. <laughs> These three names, this is purely coincidental. I swear. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, I don't know what saying, this means. If I had a Bible to swear on, I would. So I can here you one. are. No, don't, by <laughs> all means, we're just we're just powering ahead at this point. Um, I'm fair, but I'm stubborn. Number one is the city of Riverside, California. Explore Riverside Weekly Audio Podcast. Number two, City Council Declassified Riverside Pod. Council con and the third one is Council Conversations, the City of Riverside. Number two. Number two. Are you sure? You yes. don't want to. You don't want to go no. for a different one. You don't want to. No. Perhaps the podcast doesn't take place in Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm going with two. It's my knee knee jerk reaction. I'm just doing it. Okay, your knee jerk reaction is incorrect. It's it was okay. This it was the city of Riverside, California. Explore Riverside Weekly Audio Podcast. All right. So sorry. Four-hour-long podcast, by the way. Like there wow. Was There's hours. a lot going on. It's a big river by the it's side. It's a big river, and it's a big side. Like, I get it. The riverside. <laughs> yeah, the riverside. we got Jesse over here singing Neil Young. The riverside. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so sorry. You almost had a perfect game. And I love how ominous its artwork is. It's just the Apple Podcasts logo, I think. Um, there's no description either. There's no description either. Yes, it is worth oh. mentioning that it is merely titled Explore Riverside Weekly 34, Council Member Chris MacArthur. So we don't know if this takes place in Riverside. They started by name checking New Jersey at one point. So maybe it takes place in like Montville, New Jersey for all we know. <laughs> at any rate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Oliver. I find it hard to believe that um, our resident uh, trumpeter would be humming or singing a Neil Young song. I just want to fact check that. Yeah, it was what yeah, was that? I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's it's called "Down by the Riverside." I'm pretty sure it's a folk tune. Okay, I'll do there a you quick go. Google here. There it's is probably... a Neil Young version, I think. That's why I jumped to it. "Down by the River" is the Neil Young song. This says it is Neil Young down by the river, down by the riverside. Mm. It's an uh, African-American spiritual roots date back to before the Civil War. First published in 1918. That's okay. where Neil Young copied it from. That's I yes. From anything that was written after 1943. So <laughs> I, 
I just wanted to check on that. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that was a good check. And yes, Pratik, you're totally right. Neil Young heard that in the 60s and he went, I'm going to put this on something called the Pano one day. Exactly. <laughs> So welcome back to Spotify, Neil Young. On that note, okay, you've all gone once. Let's let's all band together, see if we can make up for Christy dropping the ball on your perfect game. I feel like there needs to be a prize for when you guys get a perfect game. I don't know what it is. We won't because um, it'll be me. It'll be me. I'll screw it up. <laughs> so don't even worry about it. I tried don't to steer even, you away from it. it. I don't trust I, you. Yeah, don't that's like fair. That's player. valid. <laughs> I am a mischievous character. A rascal, even. A rascal, yes. I have been told that I give a little rascal energy. <laughs> so That's let's so all just <laughs> let's all just band together now, except for Alyssa and I, who will throw curveballs at you and see if you guys can get the next one. You act reasonably in identifying the group of people, and um, you can't reasonably identify the person who did it. So in those circumstances, it would be reasonable to dismiss both parties. Let's just say you have a situation where there is a theft from a till which only two employees have access to. Now, you have reasonable belief that the money has been stolen and you question them. You've gone through a reasonable investigation, but you can't pinpoint which of the employees is responsible, but you know somebody is. In those circumstances, you could dismiss both employees and it would be reasonable to do so. So that's in relation to conduct dismissals. As you've heard, you need to follow a fair procedure and you need to look at the virtual test for reasonableness of the dismissal. And that includes carrying out a reasonable investigation. Now, what do you need to do in relation to capability or qualification dismissals? Okay, there was your clip and here are your three options. Number one, employees' rights. Number two, HR informant pod. And number three, the Employment Law and HR podcast. Oliver, as our as our HR resident HR person, do you listen to any of these? Do you listen to this podcast? Does it uh, sound familiar? I also listen to all the HR podcasts, but I can't remember the name super well. So, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Looks like. Y'all are flummoxed. Can can we give them one tip, Alyssa? Just like one tip. Not even a tip, just so much as an image that one of them gave me, one of the titles. Yeah, that's... Okay. I'm going to strongly urge that you don't pick HR Informant Pod, because when I read that, I immediately yeah. pictured somebody wearing a wire and standing next to his coworkers and being like, so, who wants to rob the till today? I can't wait. Would all imagine... <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing a duster he looks like uh the guy from watergate in like the parking garage like i heard someone wants to cause an hr infraction <laughs> tries to so hr support us <laughs> yeah so i don't know so if that what are helps the other two you. options employees rights and the employment law and hr podcast I feel like they were talking about some some law stuff. I mean, they were. I feel like that goes into employee rights, but I don't feel like it, I was getting big HR vibes from it. And so, like yeah. going into it, I was I almost wanted to say, Nicholas, can I have a golden ticket to where if I can if I can guess part of the title beforehand, do we get mm. bonus points? Because I knew HR was going to have to be in it. Okay. So and if got. it's not. A choice? No, you got a choice. Well, take no, away. I mean, in you the future, 50%. this is interesting. In the future, Jesse, if anyone here wants to guess the title blind for bonus points, they can. But just remember, the points don't do anything. <laughs> it's all I They're have, just... Nicholas. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. They don't give you V bucks. I just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> v bucks? It's the money in Fortnite. Fortnite, yeah. <laughs> I need H bucks. H bucks, heady H bucks. Rex. I'd like All to do a side wager. Said. In the future, you can do exactly that, yes. All that to being said, since we're taking out number two at HR, there's only one other one with HR, and so I, I'm going to vote number three mm. for consideration. I'm, I'm with Jesse on this one. Let's okay. Do it. it sounds like you guys are going for the Employment Law and HR podcast, and you are correct. 
Nice. It was not employees' rights, and it was not the one about the guy in the trench coat trying to get his coworkers to break the rules. I'd listen to that one too, though. I would. I would listen to like a stealth podcast about that. Um, So there we have it. I do like the artwork for this. I think it is like, I don't know. It's a little intense for something that's presumably trying to keep you from getting fired, but cool. Yeah, this looks this. If I was scrolling and just saw this, I would be like, oh, this is be will be an intense, almost, uh, you know, uh, thriller esque uh, type of <laughs> podcast. But it was definitely not. Yeah. Like so, a true crime it does feel mm-hmm. like a true crime pod about that time Ooh, somebody robbed the cash fired. register. <laughs> Not to make a British pun, but this podcast has the T. That's a good, that's well done. I don't, can you explain it, please? For and anybody who can understand. Uh, so T is uh, a, uh, like a colloquial term for gossip or things like that. Drama, and then, but yeah. it's also, I believe that the the person speaking has some British descent, at least, based off of how they were pronouncing some of their vowels. And they are historically a T, uh, pro T people. There you go. So, on that enchanting note, this is from the episode Unfair Dismissal, The Reasonableness of Dismissal, Episode 3. So maybe this is like a season-spanning arc, which does sound kind of true crimey now that, now that I've read that. Um, and it looks like this artwork we're looking at might be episode art, so very cool. Here's a little bit about the show. An update on the law and best practice for managing and recruiting staff and for dealing with any issue that may arise. An easy to listen to legal and practical update. So there you have it. That was our show. And that was our last clip for the day. So thank you to everyone for playing. You got so close to a perfect game. And eventually, once I think you guys will actually get a perfect game, I'll try and think of a fun prize. I don't know. So yeah. Bye.